Uh, so thanks for the introduction. My name is Suwen Zhu from Stony Brook University, and I'll be presenting our work, Optimal T9, uh, an optimized T9-like keyboard for small touchscreen devices. So uh, variable devices have been popular over the last few years, and smartwatch is one of them. Um, but still, typing on smartwatch is kind of hard because first you have to put the 26 letters onto the watch itself, which makes each key extremely small. And second is because um, our finger is in general not a very accurate touch device, so when you do type on your watch, you tend to make, uh, mix, make mistakes. So you can see like even the user tries to put his finger like up, upward so the uh, contact area is smaller, still he makes mistakes. Mm. So we propose a computational method to design T9-like layouts for smartwatches. Uh, while, we, uh, while we consider T9-like layout because uh, basically it, ha it has only nine keys. So it makes each key larger, so users will be easier to acquire the target while they are t typing. And we consider uh, three factors when designing the layout. The first one is clarity, and second is typing speed, and the third will be learnability. So I will explain each of them later. Uh, first, clarity. We use clarity to define how much the layout is resistant to uh, work collisions. So basically when you have a multi-letter key layout, um, there are certain words that correspond to the same typing sequence. So in this case, when you type the keys, I think eight, four, and three, it corresponds to the word the and also the word tie. So we first define the clarity of each word based on their uh, frequency in the corpus and the words that share the same typing sequence. So let's see an example. If we have a corpus with only three words, um, the and Thai share the same typing sequence, they have frequency 0.5 and 0.1. Um, and then the word add has like no word collisions. So in that case, the clarity score of the and Thai will be uh, lower compared with their original frequency. So basically the clarity score, um, intuitively it shows that if a word has a uh, collision with more words, it has a lower clarity score. Also, it, if it uh, has word collisions with like high frequency words, it also has a low score. Uh, and then we use the frequency of each word in the corpus to sum up the clarity score that will be the clarity of the entire layout. So in our example, that will be the clarity score for the entire layout. And second, we have the, the typing speed. Uh, we use the speed to basically measure how fast expert users can type on the layout. Uh, and why expert users? Because we can generalize typing uh, for expert users as a series of fifth law tasks. Um, basically move from one key to another. And we use fifth law to quantify the movement time of typing each word on the layout. And then it's learnability. So uh, one of the problem of uh, using a new keyboard layout is people are reluctant to change to new layouts. They stick to the QWERTY layout even if we don't use typewriters anymore. So uh, in our design, we choose to preserve the QWERTY layout's uh, key arrangement. Basically, we keep the order unchanged. So users uh, should be easy to learn the layout because the keys will be in the vicinity of their original position on a QWERTY layout. And then we did a multi-objective optimization. Um, we use the ENC corpus with about 240k words and we use the size of Apple Watch. So basically the screen size would be 26 
by 33 millimeters. So we run the Pareto optimization, and this is the results we get. Mm, so the horizontal uh, axis is the speed, and the vertical one is the clarity score. So we'll take a look at a few layouts. First is the keyboard with highest clarity. And this is the, how the layout looks like. So basically, um, when we have keyboards with high cl clarity score, we want to put uh, the vowel letters on different keys so it's easier to distinguish, especially in the case we see like letter I and letter O usually land on different keys. And then there's the keyboard with the fastest speed. So yeah, so it's kind of interesting that basically you just put every letter on one key and you don't have to move, you just tap the one key. But that also makes the clarity score very low because that's like pretty much very big ambiguity. So for our case, we we'll consider like the keyboard with maximum of the two score as the most balanced layout. And so this is how the keyboard looks like. Um, still the letter I and O are on different keys and it's a little more balanced than the previous one so you don't see all the letters on one key. And so we call it optimal T9. And uh, then we did an evaluation for the keyboard. We compare an optimal T9 uh, with uh, the regular ABC T9 so like the first key is actually empty. And then there's QWERTY-like, which was proposed a few years ago, and it's uh, swapping a few letters position on the QWERTY layout, so it's very similar to QWERTY, but it has better performance. And the last one, which is not a multi-letter key layout, but we use it as a baseline. So we had recruited um, 20 users. Um, they, so this is the within subject design, so each user type on the four keyboard. Um, and for each keyboard, we had uh, five blocks, each block with six phrases, so in total, I think, 30 phrases. And we'll see uh, some of the results. First, in terms of typing speed, uh, optimal T9 is faster than the other two multi-key letter layouts. Um, so the difference between optimal T9 and the other two was significant. And also we can see that optimal T9 is also uh, similar to QWERTY in terms of typing speed. Um, oh. And second is error rate. So uh, for the multi-key letter layouts, uh, the error rate was in general uh, lower than QWERTY. So as we have seen before, QWERTY uh, given the small key size, it causes a lot of errors for the users. And so next is in terms of learnability. So we have devised the query bounded constraint basically because we want to give the keyboard a higher learnability so users don't have to spend much time uh, learning the layout. So we uh, have the uh, speed by block data. Um, so for optimal T9, the line is kind of flat, so we don't see a drastic increase over the blocks. Uh, so it's either like they don't need to uh, relearn the layout or just the practice isn't enough for them to reach a higher speed. Um, and then for T9, we see that the first block and the fourth block is kind of a significant difference between the typing speed. And one of the reasons I think is because um, most of users don't use the T9 layout anymore right now. So, but for people who are used to T9 layout, um, T9 will be best for them because they are very familiar with it. And in terms of the subjective feedback, uh, we have the NASA TLX form for the user, so it basically shows that uh, the lower the bar, the better. 
So for QWERTY, it's like especially demanding for them. Uh, given the target size is small and they have to do um, uh, like 30 phrases on it. Um, and then we have the users to show their pref preference for each keyboard. Um, the higher the bar, the better. So optimal T9 is, uh, in terms of preference, better than the other two layouts, T9 and QWERTY-like. It also is better than QWERTY. So, um, so in general, for QWERTY layout, um, it users can still reach higher speed on it, but compared with optimal T9, users don't have to constantly, constantly focusing on the letters itself, how they are typing. They can be more relaxed when using the optimal T9. Uh, so to sum up, uh, we have uh, proposed a computational approach to design multi-letter key layouts on smartwatches. So I think the approach can also be used to other devices as well. It's um, like not only restricted to smartwatches. And our um, resulting layout, Optimal T9, performs better than the existing T9-like layouts. And it's also like similar to QWERTY, and, but uh, less straining. So that's all. And I'm happy to take questions. So while we're waiting for the first questions, why don't we present the uh, award for honorable mention? And so are any of the other co-authors in the audience? No? OK. Yeah. So <laughs> well, then come on over here. And <laughs> congratulations. Uh, let's uh, congratulate the authors on honorable mention. So does anyone have any questions? OK, so I, I, I have one. Oh, you had. Uh, Sanjung came from R2 University, so uh, the error rate was corrected or uncorrected error rate? Mm -hmm. The error rate you measured is corrected or uncorrected error rate? Uh, corrected. Corrected. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so um, we ask users to type as fast and accurate as possible. So when they cannot type a word correct for three times, they, they can skip the word. So leave the wrong word there and move on to the next one. So for QWERTY, I guess like sometimes they are typing too fast, they didn't uh, realize that there are some mistakes. And because for the multi-letter key layouts, um, you can assume the literal string is kind of always wrong. So you can just go ahead and autocorrect it. Mm -hmm. And for QWERTY, um, the users probably didn't realize that. This, so they just type ahead and didn't see. So I also have a question. So uh, I was wondering if you considered any uh, other number than nine. Um, so did you consider using uh, 12? Uh, yeah, yeah. And button so layout or anything we like consider that? other number like three by two. It's basically only six keys. That makes each key has too many letters. And then three by four, and that's like 12 keys. But on the watch, when you have uh, 12 keys, it, the key size will be uh, like uh, smaller than the key size, regular key size on a smartphone. So that would <coughs> still be too small. But if you consider doing it on your phone, uh, different key numbers would work. Yeah. Uh, may I have uh, one more question? Yeah, yeah. Is, is there still time? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so is any kind of statistical decoding was applied to the quality? Yes, yes. So all keyboards use the same statistical decoder. They use the same language model and the predictive model. Uh, but the uh, is touch model was applied to the quality? Yeah, with yeah, yeah. OK, thanks. OK, so uh, if there are no more questions, let's thank our speaker one more time.